We'll see things unravel here. Misery looking for his next arrow is going to stay towards the mid lane. Looking to shoot over the trees. Or is he? It's a tough one to see coming. I think it's easier if you're radiant with the with the arrows. Yes. Just because dire camera is usually in a bad position to see them coming. He's going to hold on to the arrows for now. Bottom lane Envy continuing to get zoned out. You do want to use this tree line here to shoot it over, but... It's like limp. Does have the Observoid behind him as well, so he does have that high ground vision to There's some extent. Here's your arrow, limp. There's a Seal Kid. Whew. Coming on in. Trying to find him. All right, he's going to bring that, that Will Whacker and see what he can do here. He sees Misery no longer on this perch, so probably giving warning to Jonas at top lane that things could be a little risky up there. Keep an eye out for some arrows yourself. And now they're going to see him coming with the Observer or Seal Kid. He's going to walk right on mm -hmm. in. He might get hit by an arrow. But he's, he's Ogre. Yeah, let's say he's Ogre. There's Fire Spirits as a dive. They could get the movement speed slow. Arrow going to be off the mark, and I think with that, they back off. Maybe want to lead with the dive to get the movement speed slow, but even with the dive, I think that was a hard to kill to get. Killing an Ogre is no easy feat. And Jonas, he's getting decent XP up top. Well, two and a half, doing at least decently well compared to Envy, who's still stuck on level one. He's maybe just considering transitioning into the jungle at this point. Pick up a Quelling Blade and just take what little farm you can get at some of these medium camps, perhaps. And NIP has a lot of heroes that can do well with farm, right? They have Lina, they have Troll, they have Quap, even an Ogre who can get an Axe Scepter. But for Cloud9, they have to have a farm Juggernaut. Hmm. There is catch-up potential with Empower, but I and mean, stacks, but he's got absolutely zero. Oh, limp sidesteps the skewer at mid lane, and he'll get himself out of there. Fata has a couple bottle charges. Should be more than okay here. Both Lena as well as Magnus. Lena with the edge there as far as, as far as CS goes. 17 CS to the 12 on Fata's Magnus, but seems like a relatively even matchup so far. Yeah, even with the threat of the pieces of the moon arrows they can't get seem to secure Whips back on envy and i think they know he has no blade here he's going to drop the healing ward and that level one healing ward going to get taken out with ease not micro back and envy that's, gives up first blood that's so nvs to get healing ward level one yeah i think they knew as well it's possibly seen it earlier or <laughs> did they, I mean, they know envy as well it's, it's like, like i remember someone was talking about how when they were trying to gank Terrorblade, and he's like level 8, they're yes. like, there's no way he has Sunder. <laughs> it's Envy, yeah. He. Yeah, he's, he's gone the 4-4 four, four build with Ill Illusions and Metamorph. But, I mean, how sad is that, that your safe lane carry isn't level 2, three and a half minutes in? Not even able to leech XP. Now he goes oh, to the Centaurs. The pro man shield, though. He would have much rather had a Quelling Blade. Yeah. I guess he's, I mean, he's going to get both, I guess, all, over time, but picks up the PMS first. Top rune coming soon. Fata going for it. There's going to be a fire blast coming out. Seal kit. You know, just use that on the Phoenix. Limp taking a bit of damage here. Marana, no arrow for the time being. Limp. Hey, get if low. that shockwave had hit. Whew. Limp's done a good job of dodging skewers, dodging shockwaves, and keeps himself out of danger through this. Right now, NIP, both mid lane as well as their well quote unquote off lane there, the Era Troll Warlord, both farming very, very well. And, and it's just a farming undying. This is not the hero you want farm on, it's Envy you really want the items coming out for. Level 1 healing ward in action, and of course level 2, the crit. Okay, so for NIP, probably pretty happy with how things are going here. Jonas did rotate towards mid on the Queen of Pain. I guess he wasn't really getting much out of this off lane anyways, but... Yeah, there's no way he could have. Swinging into this Radiant Jungle. That gets spotted out by an Observoid, but I think they know. Envy, they're like, Envy's only move is to go into the jungle. Let's go and punish oh, this. Oh, I wonder what Envy's going to do. <laughs> and he's level two. He's jungling. Do you think he has Blade Fury? No, I don't think so. He's gone He's gone for the Healing Ward and the Blade Dance, so. So greedy. <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't even know if at this point it's like not even greedy. You, your only way to catch up is the jungle, potentially. And he's yeah, thinking, but you, do, you don't die. Yeah. Right? Like, just getting spin and crit, I think, is much safer. Yes, as opposed to the healing ward, yeah. I guess he was in the lane thinking, okay, I'll get healing ward to save out on tangos and then get XP in the lane. Yeah, but that's he, never, he never got XP in <laughs> that's lane. That's greedy. You could have just fought tangos. 2% of your HP mm. for 50 seconds. So 50% of your HP. That's a whopping, like, 275. Which is like two tingles worth. Look at that doing down bottom to his jungle and everything. They get deep observer wards down. They have a ward near mid lane, which sees towards into the enemy jungle as well. They have complete control of this bottom side of the map. And Envy 
He's trying to Quelling Blade through these trees. Eris searching through every little gap. Multiple TPs coming their way. They spot out Envy and he has not got a Blade. The Blade Fury. RP will well, not keep it alive. Here comes Yonit. Skewer into the tower. Two heroes caught in that one with the RP. But Era going to turn and fight. Fat has already used the Skewer and it looks like Era will bring down your Magnus as well. Misery already throwing out the arrow, arrow as Error does go down to the Phoenix damage over time, but the Fire Blast now coming into play, and it's another kill going the way of the ninjas. Misery, no leap for the time being. Is he going down? Is there what follow up? What is going on with Cloud9? Why is Undying not here in this fight? Imagine a tombstone dropped right there, a level 3 tombstone. Bone 7. Okay, and Juggernaut didn't have spin and died again. Yeah. Big surprise. There were so many TPs in as well. It's like, okay, all these TPs, Cloud Nine are ready for this, but yeah, like you said, no one dying. NIP is just com taking complete advantage of Cloud Nine. And Cloud Nine, I mean, they're. I, I, yes, the tower is important, but I also think like losing, like not losing four heroes on your bottom lane is also very yeah. important. I think they had already pushed the tower as well. That tower, when, in, when I looked before going towards the bottom lane dive, like it was on sub 150 HP with three heroes pushing it still, so... Yeah, and Bone 7 is just on a hero that doesn't do that well with farm. And if, if he were like a bat rider and it were his BOTs or his Blink Decker that he was getting up there, okay, sure, so oh, be it. Just you wait, here comes his Midas, then he'll show you what he can do with farm. Not carry as hard as E would <laughs> yeah. with farm. E e smoked? Okay, up. he has Blade Fury. Yep. And he has a Quelling Blade before Boots. Going full greed. Just the smoke to get into my jungle so I can farm. <laughs> like, let's smoke past their wards to get into the jungle and then I can actually take some camps. I don't think I he is out. used to being in this situation. Oh, Limp, another shockwave off the mark and the glimpse back. Limp will still go down as Phoenix dives on through and back towards the mid lane. Magnus goes down. He was glimpsed back and became the focus of attention for NIP. Okay, I'm dying. He's coming into play. He's in the mid lane, shows up. Still not involved in any of the actual kills just yet. And bottom lane, it's Era pushing down the tier 1 tower. And we can just sit and watch as this happens. And Era's going to be so fat, and then he's going to be able to control Roche too. Especially if Undying doesn't fight. Undying's pretty much our only way to control Roche at this point, because Phoenix is not level 6. But he's almost there. They even they see Envy, it's like, okay, it's level 4. Do you think he has played through by now? 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Stats plus yeah. more stats. Stats plus blade dance. Well, or they're probably stats, looking at stats. the stats. If he doesn't have stats, they have to assume that he has blade fury. Yeah, he wouldn't go to healing ward. So, all right. So they, they know his blade fury, but NIP now. Their next move going to be rotating Lena as well as Ogre towards the mid lane and even into this enemy jungle. Lena taking enemy enemy neutral camps at this point. The, well, I think that's a big problem that Lena's underformed though. Because yeah. she needs mobility items to deal with not getting RP'd, to not getting caught in the Phoenix stuff, to burst heroes down before they can Omni Slash and drop Tombstone and whatnot. And I mean, she's doing decently in terms of farm. Still has more farm than anyone in Cloud9. It's just not exactly impressive for nine minutes. I think she should minutes. be more farm. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Another smoke from Cloud9, another kind of odd smoke. Protect the jungle. Yeah, they're going to go on through. It looks like Arrow may be the target, but Arrow has to land. That's really their only initiation here, outside of a skewer RP. Yeah, the, the Marana pick in general is just so risky by them. Yeah, without a good initiation, Hansen can just TP out bottom lane. He's not really got anything to worry about. They, like, that's why I don't get... They, they just use two smokes in a row. How do you smoke gank with, like, a Marana? You've got no way to guarantee this Arrow. If you find someone, there's... A chance you get the kill with an arrow, but it's not like a guaranteed kill, like if you have a lion with an impale or something. Bit of an odd one. Maybe they were just confident. I guess, I mean, with Mirana, confidence is always key. That's how you find those, those early kills. And for now, Cloud9 down many kills and a lot of net worth. The top three farmers all on that dire side, and you give Air a bit of a lead on that Troll Warlord, and he will take advantage of it. Ancients, Roshan. Your Radiant Jungle, the Dire Jungle, whatever he wants on the map, he will have access to. How's good old Magnus doing in terms of his quest for the Blink Dagger? Decent, 1900 gold, not going for the Arcane Boots, so... Going for the straight Blink Rush. His Undying picks up a first item mech, so Bone7 has got a fight now, he's got Max Tombstone, he's got mech, this is where he needs to be very active and involved. Yeah, no Midas. I mean, I... If he goes a mech, they're kind of 
pushing for the mid game, right? But their mid game isn't that strong, just because Envy is really under farmed. Phoenix is just hit level six, and Troll is kind of over farmed. If they like let NIP take an Aegis, their mid game kind of goes out the window until like the 25 minute mark and later. It also feels like they may not have the a good way to stop Bear from taking an Aegis. They're gonna just try five men at this point. Eh? Tombstone and Egg. Well, it's not even five. Yeah, Tombstone and Egg. They have got the team fight, but they can't take Roshan themselves. If NIP just back off and then wait for the Tombstone and Egg to, to wear off, then they go back in. So they can maybe delay the Roche, but preventing it altogether seems kind of tricky. Here it comes in, gonna look to bring down the tomb. Hit by the arrow, but they do take down the tomb. No more zombies to worry about, but a shockwave comes through and they really need to blink. If Mag had just a slightly better start, he could blink skewer back, and that would be an instantly one team fight and a tower. Yep. So Mag not having his items are really costing him at this point. Yeah, Mag's died what twice? Yeah, zero two on Fata and Yeah, all it took was one of those deaths to be prevented. Or one arrow hit by misery in the mid. Oh, they're gonna give Hanskin some farm at bottom lane. He's got his max glimpse now as he hits level seven. So we'll see if they can hit some static storms at this point. And Limp on the Lena needs that Yule Scepter as soon as possible. And it is coming pretty fast. You know, I was playing with someone once and they called it Elu Scepter. Elu's? <laughs> Maybe they have dyslexia. Yeah, it was Elu's. It was like the U Elu's? comes before the L, I'm fairly sure. <laughs> There's some new school play. There's your RP. The blink, blink dagger coming into play. Fata just picked this one up and kills off your Lena. Envy taking the Laguna Blade. That's some hate for Eternal Envy. But he's going to healing ward up, gets the bottle charges, and takes the T1 tower here. Suddenly, Envy could be, I don't want to say caught up, but in a much better position. Problem is, he's not really feeling confident about going for this tower. Why is he scared? What is going to kill him? Can he just spin away? Static storm, I guess. Maybe like a straight up static storm can they field, but. Outside of that, not sure. Both teams get a tower. Troll gets the deny on mid lane, though. See, Envy's got some at least damage now with the Empower phase boots. Not max in... crit. Yeah, max crit. Pure farm mode right now. Pro Man Shield, Quelling Blade, and. Pure farm mode would be no play fury. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> the, the no Omni instead. Slash. Oh, wait, I guess Omni Slash can farm be heroes. Efficiency. Yeah. Farm creeps. Oh, farm creeps. I see you, tomato and potato. Will raise you an Omni Slash. Stack a big camp and then you, yeah, throw Omni Slashes out. Not a viable farming strategy. I'm <laughs> no. sad to say. Do not try that one in your pub games, guys. So NIP, they normally I feel like we see more aggression from them, and d despite how big of an a lead they had, like we're not really seeing the ogre, the Lena, the Queen of Pain get hyper aggressive by any means they had a good fight at bottom lane but since then it has been pretty quiet from the swedish squad they're still in the lead though i think they should be threatening roche i think they should have been threatening roche well, they've got the yasha now with the the life still and troll he's gone for a max fervor build so he's got the roche build he's even gone stats i've not seen the stats troll this early on normally that is a slightly unorthodox build coming out from era here comes an ip and I think, oh, here comes Cloud9. I think NIP recognizing the potency of that Tombstone Supernova team fight, they back right off. Envy though, he's now got to a point with decent farm that <laughs> he's gonna try to do. Roche. Don't don't tell me that he's gonna try. Power. He has no life steal. Two points in healing ward. They're, they're crazy. Fata with a DD. It's possible. They are crazy. Cloud9 are doing it. Are are they really? Uh, Mech this is so slow and really bold. Oh god, what's NIP's next move? They're gonna keep throwing Dragon Slaves from afar, I imagine. Here comes your TP from Queen of Pain. Possible Sonic Wave from the high ground. They throw in there. The, the, the Axis to slow things down. RP catches out too. Limp not gonna get any spells off. They get sliced on the Lina. No Laguna Blade. Vata though. Silence in the Static Storm. Not the best axe on the Supernova from the side. Here's Jones. Sonic Wave Scream brings down Jug as well as Magnus. And that's a two for two trade so far. Cloud9 at least breaking even and look to add one more. They get a third and... Did you not have Blink up? What happened there? It was on cooldown. It was on cooldown now. Yeah. Well, Misery brought down three for four. That was a great RP by Fada to set it all up. And yeah, the Tombstone is really strong there. I'm just surprised they got the jump. They Do they have good vision around there? They have that high ground ward. I guess they wouldn't have done it without that one. And the low ground ward. It's Hera up to here, looking at 5.7. Just gonna find some backup in the form of No Tails Phoenix, who has a Blink Dagger up already. This Phoenix has to support one of your top farmers on the Cloud9 side. And okay, I guess Cloud9 at this point saying, "Look, we may be behind, but 
We have the better team fight. Yeah, but no egg and no mana on Bone 7. I also don't know why he stuck around for so long. Now they're going to have a window of like 20 seconds, I would say, where Bone 7 can't actually be there for the fight. And if NIP were more keen on taking Roche, I think it would have already been taken down. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to deal with the high ground ward as well, so I think they may make a move towards it. Iris smokes up once more, and... Arrow... Throw, I heard an arrow. Didn't see him. Okay. Yeah, Bone 7 didn't go heal fast enough, and... I mean, Cloud9, they went in, they won the fight, but they still lose the Roche. And that's yeah. the thing. Like, they, they don't have a way to secure the Roche quickly and easily. It also wasn't like a clean fight win. They lose both Magnus and Jug. Mm -hmm. Like, having Undying survive a fight is not your ideal candidate. Like, you'd rather your Undying go in, throw all his spells and die, and then the Jug comes out the winner as far as not having to die in a fight. Bone 7's not doing what he's good at. He's not feeding. Bone 7, come on, man. <laughs> You're meant to be creating space for Envy and feeding to help him out, but... So much for being EE centric. Well, they do have Cleave on the Juggernaut. Some Bottom anxious stacks. Hanskin, TP out. Where's your arrow? It's been already used and it looks like Hanskin will TP himself out. So yeah, Envy farming up ancient stacks has a Morbid Mask back at base and this will get him close to his Mask of Madness. Yeah, he's catching up decently. The ancient stacks certainly helped, but looking at his net worth, it is still number six and a little over half of Troll's net worth. Troll not leveling up Berserker's Rage. This is just a new troll build I have not seen. HP is nice. It, it definitely helps him out against nice? some of the nuke damage, but yeah, you get movement speed, you get extra bash duration. I guess he's around the time you get the SMY is when you want more points in the Berserker's Rage for sure, because you get the slow, you're more likely to be able to bash people down. <laughs> but he's going kind of range mode for the most part for now. He's coming towards mid lane. They want to defend this T1 tower. And Fata has a blink ready to go, but MP have backed off. And that build's pretty cool, actually. It's a good range build. Whoa, oh, limp hit by a five second arrow. There's going to be a TP in from Misery. Fire Spirits from afar, and one dive could finish him off. The Shockwave is there, but Lino defensive Yules, and there's your skewer, Fata. Couldn't help bring him down, but Phoenix gets the last hit in the end. Big Daddy No Tail on a killing spree. Juggernaut still kind of down in the dump with the gold, but he's moving on up in this world. 1200 gold with a blink. He's going to get silenced by the Jonas Orca. That's a new pickup, and no tell going down. Jonas, nice little arrow dodge there as Phoenix gets picked off. That also means that Juggernaut is very vulnerable because he doesn't have a Manta to get rid of the Orchid. The Marana is also very vulnerable. Having an Orchid this early is yeah. great on the Queen of Pain, especially considering what happened to her in the early game, where Phoenix was just like, hey, I dare you trade hits with me with Fire Spirits and an Undying here to back me up. If you're fast, when Mag tries to blink in with a blink copy, you can catch him with that Orchid. But we'll see. For now, Eric going to continue his farm. He's got an Ancient Stack awaiting him. And he is still top of your net worth charts alongside that Queen of Pain. Cloud9 just... We're in the best position here. As far as this early game goes, two minutes on the ages for your troll, and I imagine NIP may look to take some more objectives with this. The T1 mid tower looking pretty tasty, but it's the Cloud9 team fight which is the one kind of scary comeback potential that this lineup does have for them. Cleave them all down. Yeah, one RP with a cleaving Juggernaut Omni Slash, and that is a level two Omni Slash right now. Or like a missed egg kill can also yeah. cost them a team fight. Envy, in some ways, is caught back up, at least as far as experience goes, having hit level 11 and got his basic items. We're in a Moonlight Shadow and look to go in. Meanwhile, from the side, here comes NIP. Have they got detection or vision? They're going to glimpse one back, and there's going to be a kinetic field. Nope, going to get dealt with by Supernova. Defensive Supernova just to keep himself alive as Sentry Wards spotting out the Moonlight Shadow for now. The Tombstone gets used, but that's maybe something Arrow will look to focus down, especially with the protection of H. He gets arrowed. Likely get focused down, RP on the side, gonna push back Silkid and Limp, they're gonna lose Lina as well, now the Tombstone brought down, but it's too late, and IP may have already lost his fight, great Static Storm Kinetic build, but where's the Queen of Pain ultimate? It's not available, it's on cooldown for 15 seconds, and that's some much needed damage, Arrow hits Error on respawn, Omni Slash to follow, wow. and NIP lose three. They, wow, these RPs by Fada are just really amazing. He always hits two. 
Just and brings him back in the tower. Is it's so quick too? He doesn't really hesitate with him, and that's a good sign of a that's a sign of a great Magnus player. Just sees two. It's like okay, boom. I'm not gonna wait for a perfect opportunity. It's good enough. My team will follow up, and they end up winning a fight. And this is with an underfarm juggernaut. This is with like looked at that worth chart. Everyone's pretty poor on the side of uh, Cloud Nine, and that's with NIP having the Aegis. So it's a very bold fight from Cloud Nine. Um, and they also didn't have the egg because it had just been used. They made it work with just so little in the way of spells. It really highlights how good their team fight can be, but... Fada. Also, Carry Fada. Yeah. He also is like, not only does he instantly RP, it's like he doesn't hesitate on the skewer. There's something like, in tennis, like a lot of time you hit a good shot and then you just sit back watching your shot, seeing how good it is. He's already making his next move to make sure he's ready to make sure his team win the team fight, rather than wait and say like, oh, did I hit two, did I hit three or four? No, he's skewering before he even sees how many he hit. I was watching basketball not too long ago, and some guy had made some like sick three-pointer, and then he was trying to rally up the crowd by like raising his arms, and then yep. he was like looking towards the bleachers, and then behind him, some guy just passes the ball, and then they get dunked on like five seconds later. I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> you, you can't revel in your good place. You just exactly. do them and then move on. You've, you've just got to yeah, keep on moving, and that's something Fat is best at. Now, never been a player for publicity or, or stardom, and just plays amazing Dota. Definitely. To me, one of the strongest mid players out there right now. And we're seeing him deliver the goods right now. He's 1, 3, and 8, but he's kind of turned things around for Cloud9 with some of these RPs. I wonder what he thinks of that no shockwave build. I think he probably thinks it's pretty awful. I don't know, but he plays a, he plays mid. Finding, to be fair, was offlane, but... I mean, he had a 1v1 matchup, but Ooh, you got a Shadow see. Blade. Dang, he's rich. Okay. Now the item's not he coming out. I mean, he doesn't look that rich. He's number five in net worth, but I mean... I think it's just the Troll and the Queen of Pain are ridiculous. Like, they're really farmed for 22 minutes in. Just... They don't look that, that scary despite their farm. That was ahead in kills, but behind on farm. That is so unusual for Cloud9. Yeah, this is backwards. Fata, Shadowblade in towards mid lane. There's going to be a blink, RP, and Skewer back. Hesitated on that one. The arrow going to miss as well. Arrow going to turn and fight the egg. This is a missed play from uh, Fata. We just talked about Fata for like a minute. And <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> he even went, he Shadowbladed in and then went for the blink regardless. Like he didn't, he could have maybe saved the blink. He but also yeah, didn't was... do the turn RP. No, he didn't. All the previous ones were. I and he, they missed the arrow as a result. And then he got BKB off, and then he owned the egg. Pretty easy way for NIP to win a team fight due to Just Cloud9 miscoordinating. Oh, and they're going to catch up Bone7 as well. That's a freebie as Bone7 doesn't have buyback. This will open up to at least a tier 2 tower at mid. Okay. Good thing he wow. had all that farm. Because, I, I, I mean, yeah, you can get all this farm, and he has a mech yeah. and a Yules, but he just drops in a matter of seconds. Yeah, bottom lane, they Queen of Pain going to blink in. No Orchid coming out, though. This T2 tower stu should still drop. There's no RP available. But still a Magnus TP is coming, and Seal Kid gets low. The Skewer back on Era, and he's going down. Nicely played by Cloud9. They don't get the T2, and they're chasing for more Handskin. On Disruptor, not going to find much. They got the Glimpse back to base on the Magnus. Actually, will turn it onto the Mirana. If Magnus Glimpse back, ends up being a favorable fight for Cloud9 regardless. But Limp with a Shadow Blade of his own is still hunting towards this mid lane. Shadow Blade Wars. They need... Mm, I don't know. What item is Envy getting? Standard mask Probably Manta Yashi. against the maybe Manta against the uh, Queen of Pain Orchid. It's, it's, yeah, but there's so much AOE though to deal with the Manta. They have the Lena and the Queen of Pain. Just got a split push and yeah. Matt Vision scout with them. But it it does still feel like the Queen of Pain solo kill potential is maybe reason enough to get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can just TP out, right? Depends on, I guess it depends on like how much burst Queen of Pain can offer. I mean, this is a level 16 Queen of Pain. Jonas is huge. He's taken over the top Oh, farmer. wait, Troll didn't have BKB for that last fight? Wow, they really messed up. Yeah, he took a lot of damage, and despite the stats build, just looking kind of squishy in that last fight. Arrow now. No, I'm, I'm talking about the, the one before where the Phoenix... Or where they missed the arrow. I thought that he BKB'd and killed the arrow. Oh, he, no, he no. Just the arrow the just, like, yeah. swerved around. The skewer made the arrow miss, it looked like, in mm. some ways. 
Or he was expecting like a quicker skewer. Yeah, know. that was a big deal because if they killed him right there, he still might not have BKB. Instead, he has BKB and a thousand gold. Yeah. Well, so was... next Roche is, I mean, pretty securely in IPs unless Cloud9 has a big RP into like an egg and Omni Slash. They really need that right now, I would say. It feels like the previous Roche went really well for them because that was before NIP had their BKBs and that was when it's like your Undying has just hit like level 7, level 8 and he's really strong but now we're getting to a point where NIP have the damage to bring down a Tombstone. It's a very nice Sentry Ward right here. They have This Sentry Ward killed this ward and that, I mean, that just makes it that much scarier for Cloud9 to go into the pit. Mm -hmm. Limp gonna Shadow Blade through. This is aggressive play. He sees Fartel, LSA, Laguna Blade. Down goes Magnus, and now they can definitely go into the pit. Lena with a nice pick off using that Shadow Blade. Arrow will. Whoa! Oh, thought it hit Arrow. Didn't happen. So Arrow will presumably get a free Roach here, unless Cloud9 decide to they get aggressive. No but, way. Oh dear, they're going for I mean, it. They, are they? Wow. This is. Maybe not expecting them to have sentries? I don't know if they can do this. Jonas, he gets hit by an arrow though on the low ground. If they can kill the Queen of Pain or work out BKB blinks to the side. There's your great static storm. LSA on two. Envy won't even get an Omni Slash off. They're going to lose this fight horribly as the Phoenix does get out of there using a dive for now. Jonas still chasing. Has a blink orchid in two seconds as well as the Sonic Wave. No Sonic Wave even needed for that fight. How do they think they're going to win that fight with BKBs up on NIP? Like they they have to get an RP into into a cleave kill, and if they if that doesn't happen, there's no no chance. They're gonna lose a fourth hero now as misery goes down as well. They were just really desperate, I suppose, because I mean I, that was just that's just uncalled. Being desperate's one thing, but that was a fight which never seemed like it was gonna work out well for them. I think they, they, they had a hope that they wouldn't have sentries, but I mean clearly they had a sentry around the area because they killed the observer ward. Yep. So I mean they're just maybe really underestimating NIP. They just have nothing on BKB unless they get hit, like, they hit him with an arrow. Envy is nowhere near enough farm to kill Troll and BKB, so, yeah, I, I, I just think that was a very ill-conceived notion to run in there and run into the river. And now with that, NIP secures map control for, I don't know, a good, probably until the next Roche. Yeah, um, but... but, but. By then, they may have tried to even breach the high ground. They have got a troll who's got his helmet of dominate, has a Scardy now being worked on, but as he picks up an ultimate orb. Breaching high ground versus Fada's mag. Tricky. All it takes is one pick by Delina. Yeah. Yes, they need the pick off to actually be able to go for that. So we'll see what Lena can do. Needs that. Has the money for the Ag Scepter now as well. So I imagine he's picking up the point booster now and making his way over for that. So there we go. Yeah, Limp's going to bring bring out the Ags and. This is where it gets even trickier for yeah, Cloud9. Because usually you get BKBs to deal with the Lena Burst, but if you get BKB, you're going to get Lagoon in the face, and that's two-thirds of your HP, if not more. Well, things pretty tough for Cloud9. They have a couple heroes that are just completely petered out at this point in the game. Undying, I would say, is just not useful. It come 30 minutes, and Marana, who hasn't picked up many kills, is also not useful considering her farm. So yep. most of these fights are just simply 3v5. Yeah, it, it, the Magnus hitting RPs is so crucial because of how much these heroes have fallen off. And yeah, the Phoenix Magnus give a lot of team fight. And Envy, despite his bad start, is offering a decent amount to his team, especially when he's got that empower on himself. But here we go, Blink Skewer into an arrow. Nice bit of teamwork there from Cloud9. It's a kill, but just an ogre kill. I'll swear, NIP just leaving the Ogre up there alone to defend. I don't think they quite realized how many heroes Cloud9 had up in that top lane. But Cloud9 is 5 manning and not really farming. Yeah, meanwhile NIP just gonna farm the enemy jungle, farm the bottom lane, pushed up mid lane pretty deep. Disruptor also almost has a uh, Scepter, so if Juggernaut wants to use Manta, he's not gonna be able to do anything. Okay, well, Cloud9 are going to TP themselves out. Fata looking for another pick off towards bottom lane, and he may find this Queen of Pain. Blinks the side just in time before he gets scouted, and doesn't look like Queen of Pain will get caught out here. Queen of Pain Scepter coming soon as well, so items galore for the ninjas in pajamas. Oh, do you go for Envy? You're hoping Envy maybe pops a Manta style or something and gets too greedy for his yeah, farm. Yeah, he has 1500 HP though. Yeah, 
even if he does, you're not looking very likely at a kill here, so... Limp gonna shut a blade out once again, just make a move through this Radiant jungle, see what he can find. Bone7 in the mid lane, it looks like, is gonna be the hero on the receiving end of this aggression. 1200 HP is not enough for you, Bone7, my friend. Laguna Blade will blow him up. Yeah, this build from Undying is just... Um, again, he has a lot of farm, but he just can't do that much with it. What are you gonna do? Get a lot of HP and armor to tank through Troll? Quap, he, Undying just is not very good at farming. It's It was so imperative that he was there for early fights so that he can keep NIP under farm, keep those BKBs delayed, to, uh, delay those scepters, but now they have almost three Ag scepters on NIP. Okay, well, Cloud9, they kind of got their back against the wall at this point. It is not going to be easy to turn this one around if NIP just polish things up and don't give away the kills that they kind of have from time to time with that Magnus RP. Well, Quap gets solo RP, but... <laughs> no follow up. <laughs> close. No, not really close. <laughs> Sonic Wave's back up and they're hunting. They're trying to find those kills. TP's out all across the board from Cloud9 and... Cloud9 kind of just stalling for time, but I'm not exactly sure what their end game is here. Roshan going to respawn here in just a few minutes time. Envy may be trying to look for a solo kill around here, but it will be spotted out by Observer War from an IP. Oh, and Phoenix can get awkwarded up. Another Sonic Wave dodge. Not the first one, but not the first we've seen. We've seen a few this game. Omni Slash going through. Handskin brought down on the Disruptor. Can NIP turn this one around? They're going to see. Uh oh, two heroes with an LSA. Fata goes down again. Nicely played by Yolina. The Moonlight Shadow. Not kicking in soon enough to keep them alive and NIP. Gonna keep chasing forward. Looking for Big Day Notel. Sunray over the trees, but he gets spotted out, silenced up as well. Yonas this time around will not be fooled. As the Yule Scepter is not gonna keep him alive. Yeah, he tried to blink out, but it was just a split second away from coming up. Well, they end up delaying Disruptor Scepter but just a little bit. But at the same time, just no real concrete gains from C9's plays. At this point, delaying a Disruptor Scepter by a little bit to lose a, like the Magnus again, the Phoenix and all that, it doesn't seem worthwhile. Do you think Envy can end up carrying this? Like, he's under farm, but he has empower to make up for it. Yeah, I think you, you put Envy on a similar level. Of, like, even if you can say, let's say, Envy is the same farm or, or has the same impact as a troll in a team fight. I think the problem is Queen of Pain and Lina also ridiculously farmed. Disruptor with an Ag Scepter can have a high impact, so... It still feels like, okay, Envy's back in the game, but Fata has to be hitting insane RPs to give Cloud9 a shot at winning this game, still. I mean, can they kill Troll in an RP now? It's 2800 HP. Or, yeah, with a... With Omni Slash, I'd say definitely, but without? Then it gets tricky. Yeah, I mean, if they have people tanking there with him, though. Or well, spread out enough so they yeah. aren't getting hit by Cleave. I mean, he can start hitting pretty hard soon, especially once he gets this Scotty of his own. Hit him in an RP and then just give him the blade dance. Watching Fada, looking for the setup oh, over Rimp here. Is in Vizzo. Do they not have a gem? <laughs> okay, there we go. They get the blink RP, catches out Limp, and they'll bring him down through the AoE damage here. They're going to drop the gem on the ground as the Ogre dies as well. Lena going to buy back and troll. Brings down the tomb, looks to move forward. They get the glimpse back on Fata. Magnus going to be the casualty of war for Cloud9 as Jonas wants to chase down and catch up to Misery, but not sure he's going to be able to do so as Misery gets back to the high ground. Jonas has an orchid ready. Misery with six seconds to go before he can leap, and Yule's arrow, BKB dodges it. Misery now in some trouble here. Could just go for the Sonic Wave. Doesn't have mana for it, though. One more right click going to be at least necessary. There's your gem drop. And... Cloud9, do recover Misery's gem. That's the <laughs> important thing there. But the push is coming their way. Yeah, going for a risky play right there. And now they won't have RP up for the defense, even if Fata were to buy back right now. And it's still, what, 50 seconds left? 45 seconds? An era. Not stopping. We'll take the C3 out shortly after the glyph. Okay, well, the Rack's now completely vulnerable here in the mid lane, and there's just so little Cloud9 can do. Even when Magnus respawns, it's 30 seconds before there's an RP. Bone7 in the front lines gets it taken out by a Laguna Blade. Rax goes down next, and 
NIP will take their prize and probably leave without any potential to take another lane. There's still T2 Tower standing at both bottom and top, but for NIP, it's still a decent achievement for them, especially now that Roche has respawned, so, spawned, so Aegis and Cheese await the Swedish squad here. This is it for Cloud9. They have to, I think, smoke and go for a play here. If they don't... They're, they're too late. They're too, too late. TD yeah. rune. It's, <laughs> they're well. not getting here in time. It's pretty unfortunate that there was a DD rune that spawned, but I'm, I mean, with the Aegis and the Cheese on top of what Era already has. Yeah. Dyer's top tower is under I don't attack. think Envy can, can carry this one. He's going to need a lot more in the way of items, not just him, but he's a solo carry at this point, too, is the other thing. For NIP, the amount of damage a Lena or a Queen of Pain can offer makes it kind of feels like a three carry lineup for NIP. For Cloud9, all the damage is coming from Jug. Magnus can give him that big team fight capabilities for the NIP which is amazing in the late game, but as far as damage output goes, Magnus doesn't offer a whole lot. And their supports just don't do anything versus BKB. I think that's one of the one of the bigger deals. Whereas Ogre, at least he can still bloodlust his teammates. Oh, the Static Storm. Envy gets isolated and brought down. Meanwhile to the south, Fata gonna get Glimpse back in. Oh dear, that's Skewer not gonna save his life, and that's gonna be two dead at the top for Cloud9. Yeah, that's rough. So... Ninjas in pajamas, probably going to look to just push out the next lane and go for an, another set of racks here. Arrow's already at bottom lane with the Boots of Travel purchase, and he's probably just feeling confident enough to solo push this tier 2 tower. Seal Kid! Bottom tower is under What's Seal Kid up to? Just walking around. Just <laughs> down wards. Just excited by Seal Kid. Now we're talking Seal Kid. Look at that warden. I mean, level four bloodlust is no joke. They have so many, so much plus attack speed, bloodlust, troll, uh, and and Lena. Everyone's a carry at this point. Yeah. I mean, first pick Lena is just, or first pick Phoenix is just. I don't want to say like completely counterable, but easily countered, I would say. Yeah. It was a support Phoenix, so they did invest a lot. I mean, it's a lot of heroes to counter a support Phoenix, but I mean, it's the, like, the cores didn't do enough. They can also just right click anyone else oh. with their massive amount of damage. Fata gonna miss that blink skewer and Era gonna finish off the melee racks now. Look to turn and fight. He's got the helmet of the dominate for some life, so the egg now comes out as well. Can he bring it down in time? Doesn't look like it. BKBs that will allow him to do so. Misery next in line, does have a leap available and looks like an MP may just back off. They earn up Era, but that's gonna quickly get dealt with as he does go down to a shockwave. No skewer up yet for Fata. Arrow. Oh, missed time. Era not going to get hit by that one. The Omni Slash is doing okay damage. Gets him down below half HP, but now Era turns and fights. RP oh. completely whiffs. Sonic Wave goes through, brings down your jug. And Did he Arana get hit by a uh, Dragon Slave? Hit by something. He must have. Either that or he completely PGG'd yeah, it's, it. This one was just way too much on Fata. Their lineup just completely dependent on him hitting perfect RPs. I don't think they expected the offensive tri lane coming out from NIP, so Envy just got hugely under farm and was playing catch up the entire game. They had re no real good shot at taking down Roche, and they even won that one fight, but still couldn't prevent the first Roche, which led to the second Roche. So, I don't know. All in all, I just didn't really like the draft from Cloud9. I didn't really like how everything was on Fada. He played yep. very well, but he couldn't carry his team. And, I mean, Era was just magnificent on the troll, one of the heroes that he's best at. The way they laned it, too, they put pressure on Envy from the get-go. They knew he wasn't going to have much help in that bottom lane. Did you see that? And that's what we're doing for that Undying Phoenix. It works if you get the two heroes against the tri lane, but NIP put a Queen of Pain solo against, and that Queen of Pain, Jonas went 11, 1, and 9. He did not get shut down. You compare what he offered to what Envy offered, it's light and day. And what about Misery? Misery, he missed arrows in the mid lane. And as we talked about, they yeah. just needed Fada to be online a little bit earlier. He had a lot of farm for the situation that he was put in, and he just couldn't make enough happen just because no one else was really doing anything. Seemed like an odd last pick support, the yeah. Marana. Well, with that, it's going to be Cloud9 dropping down to the lower bracket where they will be meeting Team Alliance. It's going to be NIP versus Secret in your winner bracket final. That best of one coming up.